Hi. Thanks for spending a little time with me again today and with the next issue of Gaia's Voice. I was fairly confident when I sat down today to channel this recording for you that the topic, the obvious topic, would be about the Icelandic volcano, <laughs> the one that none of us can pronounce the name of. <laughs> and yet, as I asked Gaia about that, she said, Not yet. There are a few other things that need to happen yet in regards to volcanoes around the world and what will be happening with them and how they will respond and how we will communicate with them. And at that appropriate time, we will definitely address that subject. However, she seemed very interested in speaking about how things like volcanoes and other great powerhouses around the globe respond to weather. And so our subject for today has more to do with weather. And in fact, I would like to call it the language of weather. So here we go. I bid you good day. As we begin to unfold our subject, it is indeed by my choosing, and so that you will know more about the reference from which we speak. Every day, almost everyone looks out the window or turns on a broadcast that will tell them, alert them, what the weather is going to be like that day. Think about that for a moment. Every day you are interested in the subject of the weather. It is sunny, it is cloudy, it is rainy, it is snowy. It seems at first glance that the weather is simply that which would indicate to you take an overcoat or not, plan for a longer trip or not. But if we were to, in truth, examine it, explore the subject a little bit more, a little bit deeper, we will begin to see that there are other anomalies, other truths, another language, in fact, being spoken. One of the reasons why the subject of weather is so very important and so very interesting to you is that, in fact, it is another way that the earth I, Gaia, speak with you, communicate with you, share with you, and to a certain degree affect or influence you day by day, assisting you in becoming more of that which you already are. You are not certain whether to think of the weather as something that is terrestrial or not. After all, cloud cover can go miles up into the air. At what point, then, does an anomaly in weather or a weather event or changes in weather affect the earth? And yet, whether or not it is sunny outside or not is now affecting whether spring will come soon or later than what you expected. It is affecting the leaves on the tree, the pollen count, and whether one will have a highly allergic season or not. And so indeed it is the earth speaking to you in a variety of ways, and it is a fine time that we explore this subject as well. So then, the weather itself is the language. It is one of the languages the earth uses to communicate with all of its elements and all of its kingdoms. In fact, the elements and the kingdoms make up a part of all of the factors of weather. If there were no humans upon the earth, surely you can imagine that the weather would be different. There may or may not be smog upon the earth based upon the man-made elements and mechanisms that you have created. The earth would be a little bit cooler without humanity upon the earth and several other changes as well. The same applies to all of the other kingdoms, and of course, the elements would be unique and different themselves too. Water would be either wetter or drier, depending upon humanity's prolonged existence upon the earth. 
Interestingly, I tell you that there would be much more fire upon the earth without humanity upon it, for there would be much more electrical energy, less magnetic energy, and so there would be more electrical storms upon the earth, more lightning, matter of fact, without anyone but nature itself to extinguish those fires. In itself, that is simply a fact. It does not mean that more of the earth would burn or burn out. It simply means that the element of fire would be more present upon the earth than it is now. Fire is more represented upon the earth now by combustion, that which is being consumed, that which is consuming itself that which is being used through mechanisms, for instance, the consumption of fuel through your automobiles, the consumption and burning of foods in your bodies. All of this then creates units of heat, and so the earth is already warmed by your presence. There is plenty of water upon the earth, as we have said before, but it would be expressed in different ways without humanity upon the earth it would be more vaporous and the air would be a little bit more cool to the touch and it would also feel just a little bit wetter a little bit more humid that is yet to come as we will see now then whether again the language of the elements and the kingdoms of the earth it is a language in which all things are the language and speak the language, speak to each other, consciously and unconsciously. And so weather is another aspect of Gaia. It is another language that Gaia speaks, and it is one that all of you to some degree understand, and so much the better if you could understand it that much more. And so as the language unfolds, it creates a relationship. So you have a relationship with weather itself. Perhaps you prefer sunny days rather than cloudy days, or rain rather than snow. But either way, that preference creates a communication with weather, and that communication can be developed. Whether or not you recognize it, the weather stimulates the weather awakens, the weather restores, the weather recharges, and it has many other properties as well. This is by way of saying that it has, of its own, the qualities of life force and the ability to bring forward more life force within you. Perhaps that is reason enough to develop a relationship with weather and all that it brings. Now, this relationship of which I speak is not something that is remote. It is not you will look up in the sky and simply imagine that there is a force that you have a relationship with. It is much more than that. It is very specific. And if you allow yourself to attune to it just so, it will literally begin to speak to you and you to it, if you like. You have within your own systems a messaging system that is almost instantaneous. Well, I dare say that the instantaneous messaging that the earth has in terms of weather is that much more instantaneous than you already know. But it is now a matter of learning that language, using it to your advantage, developing it further, and even sharing or teaching it to others. Because the weather is speaking a little bit more loudly now, as are other facets of the earth. Here is yet one more arrangement that the earth prepares for you, one more companion that is also the earth for you to call your own. 
When you begin to develop a relationship with the earth and weather and work with it, you will begin to see that you are more in tune with all of the elements. It is not simply that it is a rainy day and so today water is your element. It is much more than that. It is not a windy day and so the air is your companion for the day. It is a communication system that can speak to you, channel to you if you like and bring to you information that can be very, very distant, even from other lands, even from other times, if you are so inclined. And for the most part, it can assist you with how to arrange yourself, your home, your day. And, particularly these days, it can even serve as an early warning system, so you can have a telepathic relationship with weather and have it begin to suit you. Think now for one moment before you begin to think not me or perhaps in many years if I really tried. Think now. There are many that study and postulate that perhaps there are those working behind the scenes who are in fact controlling and influencing the weather for their own selfish reasons. Now, if the weather could be manipulated and influenced this way, who is doing so and for what purpose and what makes them think that they can indeed manipulate and influence the weather and you as a byproduct of that weather? It is obvious that they have a certain understanding that indeed the weather is awake, alive, and a powerhouse, a powerful force that is intelligent and conscious, and therefore, if one could control it and direct it, so much the better. And so indeed I will confirm to you that there are those that would seek to do just that. It is a little bit like being king of the hill. If one can, indeed, control and influence a resource or even a person, there is a little bit more power for that king than there would be for another. But of course I have also just confirmed for you that the weather is an intelligence. The weather is not a species, as you know, but it contains its own awareness. The weather is part of my sentience. It is aware, and it is aware that it is aware. It is aware of the role that it plays where the earth is concerned. And because it is elemental in nature, it has the wisdom of nature itself. The wisdom of nature has been part of the earth for as long as I have been sentiently aware of all things. And so you must know then that the weather also knows if and when it is being manipulated or influenced. It will do so to the degree that it does, and then there are points at which the sentience, the awareness, the divine intelligence that coordinates us is in charge of all of life upon earth. If that pivotal moment is breached, then nature itself reverts to that part of it that is wild, that is uncontrollable, that becomes what it is simply for the sake of being what it is. Think upon this a bit like yourself. You may now consider yourself to be very civilized, very aware, very partial in the ways that you are, very peaceful. But think now, if you were pushed to the brink and beyond it, for what reasons that may be to each individual, there is a point, there is a breaking point within each individual in which you would revert to the aspect of you that is most protective, that is most aware of survival for one thing, but it is more than mere survival. It is that which simply resets the greater truth or the greater need. 
and so the earth is the same, and so weather also applies in the same way. Now then, weather, I do not tell you that that point has been reached. I do not tell you that there has been a breach in this warning system. But I do say to you that all of the aspects of weather are on alert. They are on alert now for some time already. So it is not simply because there has been an earthquake here and there and a volcanic eruption here and there. This awareness has been building over the last 100 to 120 years or so. A greater awareness that change is in the midst, that change is in the mix, and that awareness would then be moving the elements, redistributing them, and redistributing how they affect land and water and, well, humanity and all of the kingdoms and all of the continents as well. These then subdivided even further by countries and by which areas are more arid and which ones are better managers of resources and by which ones then deal with these in a fair system where all of the other elements and kingdoms are concerned. And so as time begins to quicken, the effects and the language that weather speaks also begins to quicken now. The benefits of this is that many are feeling a greater life force now. There is a presence within each that says, awareness is growing, something is happening, something that in some way affects me, speaks to me, directs me. And so this awareness then begins to grow and shift in the way that it does from unconsciousness up and through consciousness and becomes even greater awareness now. Again, the first benefit that I give you to some of these changes is life force itself. You may draw upon the weather for life force. After all, weather is created by electromagnetic forces between the earth and the sun and even by the relationships of the earth's proximity to other dimensions yes the quickening of other dimensions affects the third dimensional weather upon the earth and the relationship that the earth has with other planets to the degree that similar changes takes place there there is a mirroring factor of sorts to take into consideration so this relationship then is a long and ancient one. It is from a long and ancient tradition. The ancients, those that you consider the wisdom keepers, they understood this relationship. They understood exactly how the weather spoke, what it said, how it was directed, and how to use that language to direct one's path. Now you look at the weather and again decide, is it better to set out on a trip this week or next week, this month, or wait a bit? The ancients then used this much more. And in fact, the small symbol that you have of this that is left over from a very long time ago, the symbol of the weather vane, you think of this simply as a decorative item now, simply that which moves about and dances with the wind and tells to you what direction the air currents are moving in. But the ancients used this symbol as much more. They were able to douse for water with this same symbol. They were able to choose, particularly those nomadics, they were able to choose what direction to set out in, knowing that they would find, encounter just the right elements or just what they needed on a long trip. They did not simply hope that along the route they would find rivers or wells or what else they would need. They knew exactly where they would find it and in what direction it would be. 
The weather vanes that you know today are missing a few elements, a few motion detectors, a few other aspects that were added to the symbol. What you have is a leftover piece of archaeology that indeed has become a useful but mostly decorative item. But again I tell you it was a wisdom keeper's tool. Now if they had this tool, you might imagine that they had others as well. And these they would also employ to divine what the weather would be and to influence it. Notice that I do not say to control the weather because one cannot truly do that. You can influence the weather to direct itself to speak with you in a conditional way. In essence, you can bargain with the weather a little bit by directing it and encouraging it, but you cannot altogether control it. To do so brings about consequences, as you might imagine, and those that have dabbled in this regard perhaps are aware. Those that dabble with fire, as you know, are likely to get burned in the process. And, well, those that attempt, attempt to go against the currents of nature find in some way that the elements will rebel against this and will make it known. So for those that are overly concerned about who controls the weather and to what degree, know that the weather, its own intelligence, is well aware of the truths associated with this control and to the degree that they will go. Now, this is a fine time to continue to develop the language of weather in the way that the ancients used it, which is to divine meaning, not guess, and not receive simply influenced information, but to create such a relationship that the weather itself works in your benefit. It works for you. Because your intention be honorable, then it will work with you. Now, imagine that you have a special event and that there is a likelihood of rain. Some part of you would wish to insist that the rain did not come. Another part of you may hope that the rain did not come. But there is a wise part of you that knows that if you were to speak, commune directly with the currents, there are currents, ley lines, if you like, associated with weather, and these can be gently moved, displaced, and then brought back into balance, and that with a little bit of wisdom and care, this can be done easily. So, to work with weather is a little bit as you would work with the ley lines of the earth. There are currents above the earth, and these have a relationship with the currents and the ley lines upon and beneath the earth. And there is a resonance that is created between three. If you like, imagine an instrument such as a guitar that has strings. Well, the earth also has vibratory strings, if you like, and there is a relationship between one and the next, and the next and the other one, and between all three. And each one of these, then, is responsible for their placement upon the earth, for the relationship with the other, and for the harmonic that is created when all are in balance or in the process of restoring balance. This is what you can begin to attune to. So the first thing that you can do, as you gaze upward, if you like, of course, weather is all around you, but when Gaia says this automatically, there seems to be those that look upward, gazing instead of at the stars, at the clouds, or at the fine mist, or at the fog, or what may have gathered there. And that is appropriate. It is an appropriate beginning. And so at every opportunity that you wish to explore this, take the time to look up, 
see what is above you. Is it a clear sky? If it is a clear sky, what is the message? What is it that it shares if there is nothing in the sky? Does it simply mean that it is clear and sunny because there is an opportunity for the sun to shine more brightly? Does it mean that life force is more nearby, vibrating at a different rate? And so this is the point at which you stand for a moment. And yes, it does work much better when you stand than when you sit, for energy will flow through you and past you much more easily this way. And begin to receive and be touched by the elements that are all around you. Feel that there is a force field just beyond the very edge of your body. It is both electric and magnetic, but it will feel to you just a little bit more electric because that element is more easy to detect than the magnetic qualities of the elements. As you do this, you will feel affected in union. You will begin to feel that you are part of the visible world and you will begin to feel the more invisible parts of your body that extend beyond the physicalness. These parts of you will feel for a moment, particularly when you first attune to them, very alive. They will feel very stimulated. There will be a part of you that recognizes for a moment the life force and that you are a part of all of that. If you stand in that for a moment, you will see that you can replenish yourself instantly almost and so if in a day you lose your way a little bit you can restore yourself simply by taking yourself out into the weather now you must do this free of fear of course and you must take care of the physical aspects of your body and so if it is indeed a cold and engaging day then you must wrap yourself for that warmth. I assure you that the elements and the life force can find your body even beyond an evening wrap. Now, alongside this first feeling of life force that can be almost euphoric in nature, there is a moment at which you will feel a mental clarity as well. You will feel part of a greater mind. It is beyond simply feeling good because you are touched or kissed by the sun and aware of the moment. There is the next moment which is a mental clarity moment. A moment in which you gain an awareness and a truth of the language that is being spoken. If there is a particular desire that you have in that moment that you believe you can receive assistance from, from the elements themselves or the intelligence that guides them or the weather that is affected and by all of these or constructed by them, then you may address yourself to these. You must do so as an equal. You cannot approach the great powerful laws as a beggar or a supplicant. You are an equal force of nature and at the same time because you are beginning a journey in a somewhat amnesia state where you cannot remember now all of the relationships that you have had with the elements and with weather long ago, then you must also approach it from a state or a condition of innocence a simple desire to be in communion with. Then mental clarity will be stimulated and you will see that the breath itself will direct itself to fill you. As the breath fills the lungs, the lungs expand and as the lungs expand, mental clarity expands or extends into regions of the brain that understand the relationship with all things. And so a new pathway 
will begin to reveal itself in your mind. Just as a hurricane has an eye, your mind also has an eye of sorts, a center, a very calm, a very peaceful center that connects itself to all things and always has. And so the breath, which then becomes sacred even if for a moment, then becomes part of the eye of the mind, the eye of the brain, and the thoughts that will come to you will stimulate your imagination, your creativity, and begin to impulse you, perhaps, toward a different thought or a different direction than you might have chosen. In this way, weather becomes an aspect of wisdom itself, and indeed, here you have had access to you all of the relationship between the kingdoms and the elements. This is not simply a tool for gardeners or for those that wish to travel long distances in security and safety. This is another tool, if you like. This is a kinship with the divine. And so I present it to you in just this way so that you will begin to understand that the earth is speaking to you in a variety of different ways. And the weather is simply one of these. Now, as we continue to explore this subject, we come to, of course, the natural aspects that have to do with earth changes and how they are perhaps affecting your days, the decisions that you make, the directions that you will take, and much, much more. In essence, the element of air knows, even before the element of earth does, that the earth will quake in one area or another. Perhaps you have heard it reported that the air has been known to become very still just before hours, even days before an earthquake will strike. So here is the element of air that you would say, well, and that has little and nothing to do with something that is taking place 20 miles beneath the surface of the earth where the plates are directing their energy. But instead, I tell you that indeed there is a relationship between the elements themselves. And so the current, the vibrations, the magnetic vibrations deep within the earth are already communing with the electrical impulses above the earth. And so the air responds to that. And as the air responds to it, the moisture in the air at times also becomes very dry just before an earthquake. In order to maintain balance, the air currents then begin to be moved above the ground and circulate in different ways, affecting the jet stream and all other movements so that dryness in one area can equal moisture elsewhere. And so an earthquake that has not yet taken place is already affecting the weather in another part of the globe. And so as you look upon an earth change such as an earthquake thousands of miles away from where your present location may be, the weather, the very air that you breathe, is air that was stimulated by a current that the earthquake brought to you. You may not have expressed or felt the physical quivering, shaking of the earth, but you did, in fact, feel a difference in the very breath that you drew that day. So there is no separating oneself from the changes that take place upon the earth and how they share and display themselves. Therefore, again, it is important to be in communion with the language, in communion with how the earth speaks and the variety of language 
by which it speaks and directs itself. How, again, to use this? Begin to develop just an awareness. What is it that I am being with? I am one of the kingdoms of the earth, and I am using my intelligence, my emotional and mental capacity to commune with all things seen and unseen, to the benefit and credit of the earth, of humanity, those of my own kingdom, who are aware or unaware of the moment itself and that which it brings. You see, you begin to bring brotherhood to this. This awareness will then bring you much closer to the element and the conditions of weather. It is more difficult to attune yourself to this if you begin to say, those or they over there have mismanaged it. Those or they attempt to control it or control me. Those and they who do this and that. For as you place yourself in that capacity, you only separate yourself from a beautiful and somewhat a very intelligent language. You will find that the weather does not speak in a poetic language as much as other important movements that you may have experienced. It is very direct. It is a little bit more like, go here, do this, do that. It rarely speaks in the do not words, and this is something that you must attune yourself to. In fact, you will find that most of ma nature does not say do not go and do not do. It is against nature to go against itself. In essence, the do not within the language of nature is a little bit more like taking a step backwards or dropping a seed too soon or not being able to drop a seed that would then fall and grow into something. It is human nature that often, when all else fails, will place the warning flag or the caution and say, do not go here, do not do that. It is the way to say when all else fails. But you see, when you find yourself in the do not, then you find yourself a bit frozen for a moment. And you will perhaps consider that now. You find yourself a little bit unable to go forward. Well, if it's do not do this or go there, then what should I do or what am I to do? You see, in essence, there is a moment, a freezing moment or a moment of backward space, backward time, while you reassess the proper conditions. And so, more better it would be for you to be in the forward motion of doing and being. And so, as you attune yourself to sky and earth and the movements of these, you will feel more in tune, more in forward motion. You will also find that you are a little bit more in tune with time. You have become accustomed to time accelerating and to doing your best to accommodate yourself to the day or the day's changes or how you may or may not be able to accomplish all that you wish or have set out to do. When you attune yourself to the language of weather itself, it will direct your pace throughout the day. You will have some days that are slower in pace. You will have some days with a quickened pace. But you will find that you accomplish from a more balanced perspective when you do so because then again you are moving with the electromagnetic energies of the earth rather than against their current or running to catch up to their current or somehow dragging them along with you to do or be as you would wish. You will find that these subtle changes, even in thought, or how you begin to direct yourself to the weather, will assist you in many different ways, including, including, but not limited to, how you will plan a trip or a voyage with concern or without concern, much better it would be. So be it. 
the relationship that you have with weather becomes an intelligence that becomes your own. After a time, it will be a little bit transparent. You will have this relationship. It is simply a part of what you are, just as you have a relationship with those other natural things that you call your own. It is an aspect of nature itself. It has a resonance and a truth that is yours, truly yours. And then, as you see the clouds form just for you, you will see that their message becomes an individual one as well. You will feel the sun's radiation moving through the electric blue sky and receive its words or its creativity or its stimulation. And yes, there are moments of torment as well. There are moments of torment in which one sees at a distance the clouds gather and the storm begin to make its way forward, and there is a language in that as well. It would seem to you, based on our recent words, that if you were to see a storm gathering, that that in itself is a caution that says do not do or do not go. But that is not entirely so. It is a storm that gathers. It also means that energy is gathering, perhaps in your name. It is a different kind of stimulation. There is air and water conspiring, coming together, swirling, coming together in your name. You can use this power and use your mental capacity, your mental abilities to direct, to direct the power within it to place itself within your life in areas and places in which it is most needed, most wanted, most directed. And there you will be able to see that it truly does work in your favor. For the most part we have been speaking of using weather itself as a language to coordinate and to listen and to garner from the weather how to adjust and move alongside with it. And of course now as we continue to develop the subject, perhaps you will begin to see that as the earth is moving and changing and shaping its new currents, there will be moments in which there will be dust storms in which humanity must be aware. Dust storms, yes, ash storms, as you have already seen, based upon the volcanic experience of late. And there will be other vibratory storms. These are more difficult to detect, but these are created after and during an earthquake. And these will travel about the earth in the way that they do, and quite nicely, matter of fact. These are designed to benefit the earth. Aside from what toxicity you may assume is in an ash cloud that comes from a volcanic movement. Indeed, it is by the request of the element of the earth and the element of air and even the moisture content, the water element, drawing this as well and asking it of the fire in the belly of the earth and directing just where it is in the earth that has the most exquisite, the most perfect, the most fine combination of all of these to be released into the earth's air and even into the higher atmosphere of the earth if that be necessary. The earth is beginning to restore many of its resources now. This process will continue and in fact will build and will continue for approximately 200 years, even as much as 280 years, before it folds into a little bit more normal or new normal cycle. And so weather, as you have known it before, will slowly cease to be and it will be replaced by a new relationship a new timing for spring and summer and fall and winter. It will arrive not necessarily on the same date or feel very much as if it were the same event as it did. 
and so eventually these will be renamed as well. The currents of the oceans are moving and will soon move in other directions than how they have flowed now for century upon century or during this age. The winds of change are here now. And again, to be attuned with nature, that will bring a great deal of wisdom that can be used in many different ways for you. Again, look to these changes as a benefit to the earth and indeed as a potential benefit to humanity, to you individually in many different ways. Soon humanity will begin to come together to think of how to arrive at different conclusions that will benefit the future of humanity. Not because it must, although some will think so, but because there are indeed other creative ways to engage the planet, to engage a life. During these moments that are forthcoming, that is when you will begin to see the next generation step forward and, in fact, one of the older generations, they will also revisit certain ideas. Now, it will be of the younger generations, not those that are yet childlike, but those of the more adolescent nature. These will step forward with some ideas. Then there will be one of the older generations, one and in fact even more than one. These will be the ones that will think themselves particularly, well, responsible in some way. They will think we are the ones that brought much of this to bear. It was our unconsciousness or our unconscionable ignorant acts that brought some of this to bear. And while that is not entirely true, it is not entirely untrue. And so while they consider and ponder some of the problems, their benefit will be that they see what did not work and what they set aside, whether it is data or intelligence. Many of these, I tell you, were contacted by other beings from other times and from other worlds with knowledge of what was going to be if they did continue along the path that they did continue. And so many of those who dismissed this as a foolish thought or a dream or some method, measure of propaganda will return to these thoughts now and say, I did know, I did hear, I did consider that, but I did not listen. And so from the older generations to the youngest generations, there will be cooperation. And of course, then there are those that are in the middle. And of course, being stuck in the middle, they will be stuck in the middle for the most part at odds with one another, locking horns there and facing against each other in opposition there. This is another subject that perhaps we will speak on next time as we begin to see why is at loggerheads still at loggerheads and what it will take to break this before it breaks apart. But for today, we will stay with the subject of anomalies and weather and the intelligence that it brings. Now, the future of weather, that is yet to be seen how humanity directs itself. Long and long and longer ago than perhaps most of you can remember, there was something called the firmament that covered the earth. The firmament is a little bit like an invisible bubble that protected the earth. At the time, it was, well, the Earth was could have been bombarded by asteroid elements and many other space anomalies that were very damaging to the Earth at a time when the Earth was again, as now, attempting to restore itself. So the firmament then was a shield, a shield of light, a shield that was affected by the gravitational pull of the earth. It is a little bit like putting on something that affects gravity in an anti-gravity way. 
This then pushed away or deflected, better put, from the earth those objects that would have caused harm and destruction at a time of restoration. This was in place for a very, very, very long time while the earth continued to develop in relative peace and to remake itself. During that time, weather was not as it is today. It never quite seemed to be out of control. It was not, in fact, that there were sunny, perfect days every day. All of the seasons still existed, as these are somewhat governed by the influences as well of the moon and the sun and the tilt of the axis. But during that time, there was peace where the weather was concerned. There was not vast disruptions in it. And so it was a cycle that seemed very, very normal at that time and for a very long time. At a certain point, it was no longer appropriate to deflect or to quarantine the earth from the influences of the space that it occupied. And so the firmament then began to dissolve. As with other membranes, it began to thin and thin and thin until it was no longer. And so now the earth is very, very exposed. The ozone layer is a very thin one now. And so radiation that penetrates the earth is much more. The rays of the sun also are intelligent, reaching the earth much more quickly. And the variety of rays, including gamma rays from the sun, are also influencing, then, all that takes place upon the earth. All of the rays of the sun and how quickly the earth is stimulated by this kind of radiation, then, is also to some degree increasing how the earth is responding through its elements and through the weather. So some, at least, of the earth changes that are taking place have little and nothing to do with a terrestrial build-up, but more from the influence of the sun and other anomalies of the space. And so these movements as well, then, bring forward the attempt to restore, to rebuild, and to begin to create the next era or the next great age. These are the times that you are in. And, sweet ones, it is important that you will know that there will continue to be an increase that is just right for this particular stage of development for the earth. Think to yourself now that just as you have been in adolescence or at different stages in your own life in which great change takes place, to your benefit as you learn and as you grow and as you extend yourself, the same is true of the earth. While it may not seem to you that having a disruption here or there or even a destruction here or there may be of benefit to you, I tell you with certainty that the status quo of that which is and simply continues to be as it is is of no benefit to you, for you will not grow. You will not grow in creativity. You will not be stimulated to move forward in ways that you would otherwise. And so all that takes place upon the earth, regardless of how it comes about, is to the benefit and the credit of all things, all beings, all thoughts, all ideas, all gesture, in all moments even of grace and service upon the earth. And so the earth is in balance and is in rebalance and is in redirection of those balanced energies and elements. And so allow your intelligence now, allow your creativity to recognize this and your part in this. Do not say to yourself, for instance, Oh, look, this is the condition of the earth because of what has been done or said or manipulated. No. 
This is the earth in movement, in restoration, in creativity, in redirection, and you are part of the intelligence that is creatively moving the structure, the architecture of the earth itself. And as you are a part of this, you are also a part of many other great movements, cycles within cycles. And so to the degree that you can choose to participate evenly and equally in all things, choose to continue to bring awareness and truth to yourself and to those whom you work with and share your lives with and are in relationship with and to. The weather is indeed an intelligent system, one that you may commune and communicate with and begin to use for a variety of purposes. That way you will not feel used by it. Develop that communion, that companionship with this aspect of the earth and with others that we will speak of as well. And to your credit you will also hear in this the voice of Gaia, the voice of direction, the voice of relationship, and that much more.